We're going to show you how to put a spindle kit on a club car precedent. You want to jack the cart up, remove the wheels and tires, remove the dust cover from the front hub, and then with a 21 millimeter socket, remove the nut that's holding the hub on the car. You will not be replacing this nut. The next step is removing the tie rod ends from the spindle. A 17 millimeter wrench on the top and an 18 millimeter from underneath. To both driver and passenger side. Now with an 18 millimeter socket, we want to remove the nut that's holding the kingpin on the car. Now with a 13 millimeter socket, remove the bolt that's holding the kingpin to the leaf spring. And then remove the spindles from both the driver and passenger side. The next step is securely installing the steering arms to the spindles with the supplied 5 16 by 2 and a half bolts. The spindles and steering arms are side specific. As you can see, this is the passenger side. The steering arm with the tie rod end hole will go to the front and then slightly towards the inside of the car. And for identification purposes, you can see all of our spindles have the part number machine right in the side of them. Once you securely tighten these, you want to take the supply king pins, put a little bit of high temp grease on it, and you're ready to install it on the car. Now you're ready to install the spindle assembly to the car with the supplied kingpin and supplied kingpin bolt and lock nut and securely install the top of the kingpin with the stock nut. Now using the stock hardware, install the steering arms to the tie rod ends or the tie rod ends to the steering arms and securely tighten. Now install the stock hubs to the new spindle and you're going to use the supplied slotted nut. You want to securely tighten this and use the supplied cotter pin and reinstall your dust cover and securely tighten all the bolts. Do the same steps to the, past, or to the driver's side and you're done with the front assembly. Now we're going to install the rear lift. You want to jack the cart up and place the frame on jack stands. And put a car jack under the rear swing arm or the rear differential. This will allow us to drop the rear once we remove the leaf springs. Remove the wheels and tires from both sides of the car. Remove the nuts that are holding the stock U-bolts from both the driver and passenger side then remove from the car. These will not be reused. Remove the nut that is holding the stock shock to the shock mount. Save the nut and bushings for reinstallation of the remove shock. Remove the brake cable holder from both sides of the car. This will allow the brake cable to drop and give us room to take the rear of the car apart save these for reinstallation. The next step is to jack the rear differential or rear swing arm up a little bit. This will take the weight off the leaf springs which will make it easier for you to unattach the leaf springs. Unattach the leaf springs from both the front and rear leaf spring mounts. You want to save the bolts and bushings for reinstallation. Now that the leaf springs are loose, you want to take them off the car and we're going to re loosely reinstall them above the axle to the front mounts on both sides of the car. The next step is to install the supplied Allen cap screw with the Allen head up to the top of the stock brake cable mount and using the supplied lock nut securely fasten this to the stock brake cable mount. 
The next step is taking the rear riser, place it on the axle, and the stock pin from the center of the leaf spring will sit in the hole of the rear riser. Do this to both sides of the car. Take the supplied new shock mount with the rounded edge to the back and to the inside. Place on the leaf spring as shown and the supplied U-bolt goes down through the shock mount. down through your brake cable mount and your allen cap screw goes up in the center hole of the rear with the supplied nuts securely tightened Now that you got the rear lift and U-bolts installed to both sides of the car using the stock shock bushings and nuts, install the stock shock to the new shock mount and securely tighten to both sides of the car. Using the stock bolts and bushings, reinstall the rear leaf spring to the rear leaf spring mounts. Securely tighten the both sides of the car. Now that the rear lift is completely installed to both sides of the car, it's a good time to double check all your nuts and bolts to make sure they're, make sure they're securely tightened. And using the stock brake cable holder, reinstall to the front leaf spring mount on both sides of the car. Install your wheels and tires, and you're done. Now once you have the whole lift assembled front and rear, you have to set the toe of the cart. And how you do this on both the driver and passenger side, you back off the jam nut, which is a 17 millimeter, and then you put a 12 millimeter on the tie rod, which will allow you to extend the tie rod or shorten the tie rod, which will push the front of the tires in or the front of the tires out. Once you have the front end of the tires one eighth to one quarter inch narrower than the rear end of the front tires, retighten the jam nut and you're done.